Hey YouTube, Peter Bill Knife Guy. And today, I've got something pretty cool to share with you guys. Nothing. Nothing. Today we're looking at the RD9 by Ontario. This is the RD9, and I don't know, let me know in the comments if you know. This is the Ontario 9 DG. I don't know what that stands for. I haven't looked it up. This was sent to me by a friend to uh, take a look at and kind of review on my channel and possibly modify also because although this knife is pretty cool, it's a freaking Lego block on the handle. This is the worst shaped handle I've ever seen ever, I think. I mean, just literally no effort went into going to radius to radiusing this handle. It's terrible. There's, there's enough meat there to where you could put a freaking, uh, you, you could sand this down and it could be so much more comfortable. I know you can get handle scales for these guys at uh, theknifeconnection.com, but meh, why would you do that? Well, you can just modify it yourself. But anyways, what we got here is a quarter inch slab of 5160 spring steel made in the USA by Ontario Knife Company. Uh, these things are discontinued and I don't know why, because they're freaking awesome knives. This, this thing is pretty damn cool. Um, minus the poor radiusing on the handle scales. Uh, this is a tank of a freaking knife and being 5160, I, I know Ontario has had some, uh, issues in the past and I don't even know, probably in the future, in the, in the future too, with the way things are going, um, with, uh, quality control and fit and finish. But, uh, for the most part, these things were pretty much bulletproof tanks. Um, we have a, looking at nine and a half inch handle, or sorry, not, we're looking at nine and a half inch blade with, uh, let's see, from the handle to the tip, we're looking at about 14. And from the skull crusher pommel, we're looking at about 14 and three quarter inches overall, um, which is another thing. Got this nice little skull crusher pommel right there now i am not a huge fan of exposed tangs but this one seems to be done to where it's not gonna not gonna affect me too much even if i'm pulling back here um we're gonna test that out today by doing some chopping now when this was sent to me it was a brand new knife it was never used and uh, i have done some chopping with it i don't know if you can see that on the blade if it's gonna focus um so I did, I did do some chopping with it, but uh, it held its edge pretty damn good. I did a couple shorts with it, but this is just dropped it up right afterwards. It actually really didn't even need it, but you know, I like to keep all my knives razor sharp at all times. And yeah, so like I said, quarter inch thick, 5160 spring steel, full flat grind. That quarter inch comes all the way to uh, where it drops down for this drop point right here. Um, cool, cool freaking knife. I, I, I don't know why Ontario stopped carrying these. Um, let's take a comparison to this versus a couple other Ontarios that are well known. And this is going to be a poor example because this is my heavily modified Ontario SP5. Um, I rehandled this one and reshaped the blade a little bit, took down this big stupid clip that they had here. Um, but you know, lengthwise overall, they're very similar. But uh, I think these ones, I can't remember, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm assuming about a hundred bucks when they were sold originally, maybe a little more, maybe a little less. These things are right around like $60 when I bought this one. Uh, this one's in uh, 1075, yeah, 1075. And then the other one that everybody knows is the Ontario SP10 Marine Raider buoy. This one has also been modified by me because I'm not a big fan of these big U-shaped clip points that come on some of these knives. Uh, both this one and this one, had a very abrupt u-shape uh clip on it so i took this one and i flattened it out same thing with this guy there's a little bit of clip left but for the most part i flattened it out but size comparison wise these guys are all very similar they're all quarter inch thick they're all about nine and a half inch overall length on the blade and they're all choppers so yeah, this is the Ranger series too. It says I forgot to say that already. But uh, the only difference really is the fact that this guy's a full tang. You see the knife steel all the way around. These ones are kind of like uh, stick tangs, rat tail tangs. Very strong, but still 
not the same as a full tang. But anyways, let's test this thing out. I want to get to chop and I want to try it out and uh, see what see what it's working. And actually, I forgot to even talk about the sheath. So before we go chopping, let's talk about this guy. Um, typical Ontario style. Um, when I have these two knives, I literally had to make my own sheath for both of them because Ontario is known for just having terrible, terrible sheaths. They are almost unusable in my opinion, but that's just me. Some people like them, some people don't. I had to make and modify both my sheaths for these guys, actually for every freaking Ontario I own <laughs> so far, because the stuff they send you, it's functional, but that's, that's basically where it ends. They're just not good in my opinion. This thing, it, you know, it goes in, it's held tight, but you got two retaining straps, but it's just a floppy, noisy canvas, I don't even know what this crap is, sheath that uh, I just I just don't dig them. But anyways, let's go chop something. So we're going to do this a little different than usual because right now the sun is not my friend. <laughs> my favorite sticker also. But uh, let's, uh, let's see if we can get a, a static slice through this guy. And if not, then we're going to have to chop it. <laughs> it didn't work. Did not work. No, oh, we're chopping it. There we go. It's sharp, but it's, you know, it's a fairly robust blade, so. <laughs> I'm digging this thing. What about a monster can? Can we chop a monster can? Let's, uh, let's go like this, see what happens. This is empty too, by the way. Oh, a little bit empty. Woo! Choppy, choppy. Not bad. Not bad at all. No edge damage. Very nice. All right. Had to move the camera for the purposes of the sun. Just getting too, uh, too sunny over there. What we have here is a pressure treated four x four. That is very, very hard. Um, let's kind of chisel our way through the rest of this, see what happens. Wrap me off. We'll be able to see. So I can already tell you right now, this handle being square and blocky like this is not comfortable at all for chopping. I'm gonna go get some mittens. All right, got some sissy mittens on. Let's get through this thing. Even with the gloves, this is still actually kind of hurting a little bit. A little bit right there. It reverberates when you hit. It hits and that shock comes into your handle and really getting my fingers good. Well, that's how you screw up a knife. You try to smack it into wood. Don't, <laughs> don't catch it. <laughs> oh, shit happens when you're doing YouTube. No edge damage. No wobbles. We're looking good so far. Let's try something a little more realistic. A branch. Let's see uh, how good she does on this. This full flat grind, it does actually dip into the wood pretty good.
You know, it's not as much of a heavy hitter as you would think it would, would be. Is that blood? For a nine and a half inch knife, um, quarter inch thick with a full flat grind, I honestly would expect it to, uh, to chop just a little better. I honestly think that uh, if you were to choose an option like this guy, the Becker BK9, I think it would be a better contender to be honest with you. Um, if you bought the BK9 over this guy, I honestly think you would have uh, made a smart choice. These are very similar knives actually. Uh, this is a little thinner, but it also has a saber grind. Let's try it out real quick. Already much better. That Becker will out chop this Ontario all day long. Let's do a bit of a little bite, a little bit of light batoning with this guy here. <laughs> this thing's falling apart. Yeah, that works pretty good actually. Let's do that again. Oh, not bad. Not bad. Hmm. Nice. Very, very good. This is uh, almond wood. Very small pieces. We're not going super baton with this thing. Oh, pfft. nothing. Nothing. Let's do it long ways. <laughs> <laughs> Freaking nothing. I mean, yeah, this is a tiny piece, but let's, uh, let's do a bigger piece, actually. You can see this. Now, I do not know what type of wood this is. tough wood actually no bends Let's see pretty freaking tough wood for the size of it actually whatever it is It's pretty much through, but screw it. Pretty gnarly stuff. Not bad. Not the best chopper, but for other stuff, it seems to work out all right. Let's do a little bit of feather sticking if we can. But first, we need to get some stuff to feather. This is a piece of, uh, I don't know what it is, to be honest with you, but it's dunnage. Tough shit. It's pretty straight grain, though. ourselves a piece of wood. Let's see, uh, let's see if we can get any curls out of this guy. Yeah, it's not wanting to. Yeah, it might have just been that piece of wood. I am the worst feather sticker ever. So don't hold it against the knife, hold it against the user. I mean, they're feathers. They're the best I could do. 
All right, let's uh, let's go back inside and wrap this up. All right, so after that, what is my conclusion on this guy? Well, a couple things. First off, the handle ergonomics suck. That was known from the beginning. You don't even have to hit anything with this knife to know that it is a block. It's like smacking something with a Lego, but a little more comfortable, uncomfortable. <laughs> Second, also too, um, these handle scales have shifted. I don't know why, but you can see now there's a gap right there and there's a gap right here. So, I mean, we can probably loosen those up and scoot those back. I do not know why they shifted, but they did. I didn't hit the handle, I don't believe, but it did. Um, also too, just like the Ontario SP5, both these knives should be good choppers. They are both very mediocre choppers. This one did not chop anything like I thought it would. The, uh, the Cold Steel Trailmaster will out chop this. And honestly, these things aren't even available anymore. But if you were looking for something similar that is better, I 100% recommend you go with the Ontario or the, uh, the K Bar BK9. Very similar shaped knife, better handle ergonomics, um, better chopping thinner blade so it's gonna be more slicey like I said still chops is good uh, 1095 versus 5160 I've never been a fan of 5160 but uh, yeah I would say go with this if you were mad about missing this if you don't already have one as for the edge I haven't touched this thing yet it's still there but it is definitely worse for wear um, like I said, I'm not a huge fan of 5160. Seems like we do have some nickage going on there. We do. Look at that. That's not, that's, that's a factory edge on this too. We got nicks on the blade. I do not know where those came from. I didn't hit the metal table, but there they are. They're there. So yeah, uh, batoning did great. Um, even with the glove on, it wasn't that much more comfortable. And yeah. I don't know what else to say about this, but uh, thanks for watching.